I describe my work as uh, the field of comparative social theory. And so I've always had interest in personal questions of identity and broader theoretical questions of meaning. And during my dissertation, I found that I had this tension between empirical interests and theoretical interests. And my theoretical drive was so strong that it kept overpowering my desire for questions of empirical identity, what makes identity formation for Muslim youth. Now, in, I spent over six months trying to wrestle with this tension between empirical work and theoretical drive. In the end, I ended up dropping the empirical questions on Muslim identity, youth, form, youth identity formation in post 9-11 age, and went on to look at theoretical questions about Islam and modernity. My work is inherently interdisciplinary because I use the category of the human sciences. Rather than simply the social sciences or the humanities, I try to sit at the intersections of these two broad fields. So for instance, I draw upon religious studies, I draw upon social theory, I draw upon cultural studies, uh, I draw upon philosophy. In various uh, theoretical and empirical literatures, we find questions of meaning are addressed. But they're, do they're done so in very different ways. And so I try to synthesize these in my work. And in that way, it's interdisciplinary. The biggest challenge for me in terms of my research is finding an epistemic community, a scholarly community with whom to discuss and dialogue. Since my work is in some sense cutting edge, it's looking at comparative social theory, both Islamic social thought as well as Western social theory, the challenge is to find people who are well versed in both Western social thinking and Islamic social thought. Uh, now we find in Canada, for instance, that these uh, there are very few people who are working in this field. And so I'm increasingly talking with people and colleagues in Europe and trying to connect with them. But even then, the epistemic community is limited. And so trying to find colleagues uh, who are doing this leading, leading edge kind of work is a bit of a challenge. In my seminars, I try to engage in mu as much as possible in a dialogical uh, conversation and a dialogue. And what that means is I go into my classroom, I set the tone, I set the, uh, the tone or the theme for a particular lecture by giving about a 10 or 15 minute uh, overview. And then I allow one or two students to give long responses to the material. After having used those long responses to create an agenda, so on the board as students are speaking, I'm writing some of the main themes on the board, creating an agenda for the rest of the topic or discussion. After that, I engage the other students to provide insights or feedback on this broad agenda that the two initial speakers have created. Uh, and then we go on, and the, the conversations tend to be rather free-flowing. So I regard conversations as ad hoc, as informal, as free-flowing. That is limited to the seminar. But when it comes to written work, what people can expect in my uh, comments is I expect quality, and I respond to them at length in my comments. So it's a bit of a dialogue, both in terms of the conversations in the seminar, as well as in the written materials. When they submit something, I write back lengthy comments. To some extent, I believe uh, a family pedigree has played a role in my development as a scholar, as well as my own personality. Um, I come from a family uh, that's originally from uh, Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh in India, which had a well-known kind of literary, urbane sort of community. Uh, and so that influenced my own thinking about what I wanted to do. But my own personality, to be honest, uh, was such that it led me into this field. Um, but from the time that I was 11, my cousins were joking with me, Professor Saab, Professor Saab, this is, you know, he's going to grow up to be a professor. And lo and behold, uh, I indeed uh, loved l learning, loved teaching, loved the scholar, uh, scholarly uh, life. And so this is what's brought me here. What inspires me as a scholar is to deal with important fundamental questions that students in general are aware of but don't have the time to think about. And so when we're sitting in the classroom, when we have the luxury of not having to run around but can actually sit down and think about these important questions and engage with them passionately, that inspires me and I think that also inspires the students. Now as a teacher, I find it very gratifying to encourage students to develop their questions, to see how their questions lead on to other important insights, and then to see them mature and develop and then graduate 
Uh, that's very gratifying to see how they've developed in their thinking, in their writing. Uh, and in fact, it's it's a very noble profession, I would say. Uh, and that's inspiring to know that you're making a difference in students' lives.